This does conclude our press uh, portion of the dialogue. So we'll ask the press to leave the room and we'll continue the off-record. Can we get a picture with everybody facing this way? Thank you. 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 Okay, well, you see it there in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Yesterday, Kamala Harris didn't want to take any questions from the press unless they were prepared in advance, but she was very happy to go off script during her shopping trip. Sure. So you want to know that I got the George Clinton doll. Does everybody know who George Clinton is? Do you know P-Funk? No. Okay, well, there is lessons to be taught, like Bootsy Collins. Anybody know who Bootsy Collins is? Okay, so there's some education that needs to be done. I can see that. Lesson to be taught. Fox News contributor and toy enthusiast Joe Concha joins us now. Joe, I love P Funk as much as the next guy. <laughs> I can bow wow wow, yippee yo, yippee yay all day. But instead of focusing on atomic dog, shouldn't she be focusing on one, an atomic Russia, and mm. two, the increasing cost of food for my dog? Bow, wow, wow, yippee yo, yippee yay. <laughs> That's well the best done. question I've ever written. How long did I you think, think so. about that? That question took me a half an hour. Oh, my God. Yeah, I saw you jotting. Jot, 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 jot. Incredible. Uh, it looks like the vice president's uh, giving up the funk. Oh, All right. nice. We want the funk. Yes, this is true. Look, it's good to see Team Biden is consistent with the way they handle the press, whether it's Joe Biden, get out, get out, whenever the press tries to ask any questions at public events, and now we're seeing it with the vice president as well. It's really impossible. Think about this for a second. In the past three years, when have we ever seen Kamala Harris take a question outside of a controlled environment or handpicked host? I can't remember, yeah. right? And, and God forbid she's asked about, I don't know, her progress in terms of finding root causes of illegal migration at the U.S. southern border. That was her number one job. And now we see not only people are coming from Central America, but we see them coming from China, and we see them coming from the Middle East. The bottom line is that most Americans don't believe that Kamala Harris is ready to be president, and she is one heartbeat away from an 81-year-old president from doing so. And when she doesn't take questions in these situations, it only leads and only intensifies that feeling that she ain't ready. Yeah, the, uh, the most notable time that she was asked about the border in a way that she wasn't prepared to answer it was during the interview where she said, I've been to the border, I've also been to Europe. So that was not one of her That's shining right. moments. But this event that we showed uh, where she was in Michigan, she was doing a speech on abortion rights, and mm -hmm. the, the press was there, they were all seated, they were ready to ask questions, and then the moderator said, all right, well, this is, the press can leave now. The, <laughs> it, the, the, the press portion of this event is over, yeah. that doesn't happen very often, especially announced in that way. Yeah. Uh, what did you make of that? Carly, not, not at public events like this. You invite the press in, you say the press portion is over. The press portion is supposed to include Q&A, where she actually takes a couple of questions about X, Y, Z. Instead, this whole thing, like you're going to run for president or if you're vice president, you're on the ticket, you want to win back the presidency in the White House by pleading the fifth. I'm sorry, this ain't going to work. And you could point to Joe Biden and say, well, he's 81 mentally in terms of his acuity. He, it looks like he's starting to go. What's Kamala Harris's excuse? She's still in her 50s. And yet she's not going to take any questions because her handlers believe it'll go as well as it does with Joe Biden, where there's a cleanup on, a cleanup on aisles 5, 12, and 24. Well, the reason was implicit in my question. Kamala Harris is a very unserious individual. Yeah. We need to hear from her on Russia. Russia's been in the news a lot lately. Mm -hmm. You want to hear the vice president's thoughts. You don't want to hear a diatribe, which he's comfortable at, mind you, because it's easy, because it's simple, yeah. about toys and about me needing to learn lessons on George Clinton and Parliament Funkadelic. Ha ha. We don't have ha ha time in our country right now. We're going through a lot. We need serious answers from serious leaders, and we're not getting it from this White House. Especially with the election, what, eight months yeah, away now? Exa exactly. Uh, meantime, Lawrence O'Donnell scolding Democrats, waving his finger, who have concerns about the president's age. Watch. The notion that Joe Biden is too old is based on a complete and utter misunderstanding of the work of the presidency. The job is to make decisions, not speeches. Sorry. 
Sorry, Larry. Uh, he's yelling at any Democrat who dare think for themselves, you need to fall in line, Joe. It's good to see Lawrence O'Donnell has taken up the Keith Oprah mantle yeah, right. over at MSNBC. I mean, I love the quote again. You can remember what Patrick Mahomes did on the field, but you can't remember a word of his speech, and that's for very good reason. The job is on the field. Yeah, yeah, Mahomes plays football. I'm pretty sure the presidency is much different. I mean, because when you're communicating with the American people, you're inspiring them. You're, you're, you're gaining their trust. You're sharing what you're your vision is for the country as president, and that is a very important part of the job. I mean, ask historians what they thought of FDR and his fireside chats. Yeah. Were they important? Yeah. Was it important with John F. Kennedy? Was it important with Reagan or Obama or Trump? Of course it is. It's part of the job, communicating. And this is a president that barely speaks to the press. And when he does do speeches, he looks like Max Headroom at this yeah. point. In an A's reference and, that you won't get. Uh, and Joe, on that note, uh, yesterday the president met with Alexei Navalny's wife, mm -hmm. Ulia, and his daughter. And then after that meeting, he said this. Watch this. All right. One thing I made it was made clear to me is that uh, Yolanda is going to she's going to continue to fight and have on the way. We're not letting up. Thank you. Got the name wrong, Joe. Yeah, that's not a lot to remember in this situation, right? And. We see this every day. I can't put this as a one-off anymore. He does this all the time. He speaks to dead people more than that kid in Sixth Sense, and now he can't even get the name right of a widow of a man who was just murdered. It was murdered. a big meeting for him, mm -hmm. and you got to nail those moments, especially after the Robert Her report. Wow. Joe, thank you for joining us. Bye. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.